This is Twit. All right, let's get uh, Steve Gibson online because really the truth is we're burying the lead. The big story of the week and probably of, of the year. It's frozen iguanas, <laughs> but second is a huge <laughs> security problem. And it's appropriately named Meltdown Inspector. Hi, Steve. Yo, Leo. Host, Great to be with you guys. Host of Security Now, our great security show every Tuesday on the network. And so when we talked about this on Tuesday, you knew all about it, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and I'm listening. I didn't, I, we kind of talked a little bit about it. I said, oh, that reminds me of Roe Hammer. But we didn't, I, did we underestimate its impact? I don't think so. And I think a lot of this is still unknown. That is the ultimate effects. There's no attack that is ever been constructed so far this is a theoretical vulnerability which doesn't mean it doesn't need to be taken seriously because we always see in security that theoretical vulnerabilities often become actual so this is something important and what i think it mostly shows is that there's a long overlooked problem in the security of all recent uh, architectures of computers. In what, what we're assuming is that the programs that the user runs has no access to the operating system underneath, the so-called kernel, or that multiple programs running on a system don't have access to each other. That is, we, there, there's this crucial assumption about the isolation between different things going on the, that are happening at the same time on the same computer. And the design enforces this isolation. But these different things are still running on the same hardware. And what has come to light in the last, well, technically in the last few months, because this was kept on the down low, you know, on the QT for some time while engineers scurried around trying to figure out what to do about this but what we now what is now publicly understood what is common knowledge is that there are very subtle footprints which are left behind by any software running on modern processors so one of those is the contents of the so-called caches which keep recently accessed information near the chip so it can access it again. And, and another is that modern processors speculate what may be about to be asked for by the software because that allows it to get ahead. And it's one of the major ways that new systems are able to operate faster is that they guess. And in order to guess, they have to use the recent history of what the software has done under the assumption, oh, it's probably going to do that again. Well, it turns out that all of these things, the, the, the so-called branch prediction, which fork in the road the software is going to take, that leaves a trail in branch counters. And the contents of caches can be probed by asking for some specific information and accurately measuring how long it takes to get it back. That lets you know, oh, was it in the cache, in which case we got it quickly, or did the system have to go out and get it again from main memory? So essentially, there's been a sort of a sudden leap forward in our appreciation and potential ability to leverage these very subtle footprints, which any software running on today's processors leaves behind. So I'm going to say a few things. Tell me <laughs> how close I am to the truth. Because <laughs> you understand this at a deeper level than, uh, than I do. And then there's a whole bunch of people who don't know or just immediately go, I don't, what are you talking about? So, uh, and, and unfortunately, people like the Today Show, which basically said, get rid of your Mac, uh, are misinterpreting this and overemphasizing the danger. So there is a yeah. leak of information 
uh, from the cash due to speculative ex ex execution of the processor. All process, all Intel processors since 1995 have been doing this, by the way. Uh, yep. At first, AMD put out a press release that implied, oh, it's just Intel. And then Intel said, no, AMD too, because they also use speculative execution. Even ARM processors, mm -hmm. not the Raspberry Pi, not the dumb ARM processors, but even high-end ARM processors do speculative execution, have L2 caches. So this is a theoretical, in fact, proven, not theoretical, possibility in all three processors. There's right. two different teams. Uh, the Spectre and the Meltdown are two different exploits, but fundamentally accomplish the same thing. But like Rohammer, the bad guy can't say what information he's going to get. He can't say, give me your password. He's just going to get a blob of information, right? So, yes, there's, there's some level of information leakage possible if a whole bunch of preconditions are set You'd up. You'd have to be really good to write a program to do this. Yes, and the, the problem is that modern processors give the software access to fine-grained, uh. like single-cycle timing and fine-grained history information. One of the interesting ideas about mitigation, mi mitigating these problems across the board is to say, wait a minute, it's one thing for developers and compilers that need to optimize their performance to have that kind of access. But running software just doesn't need it. No, no software needs to do that level of navel gazing in order to figure out if it's doing the, the fastest job it can. So the idea of simply removing this, this level of granular access to time and the history of the footsteps, that would sort of blind software from its ability to do that. Ah, but Cur wouldn't it slow it down? That's what everybody's worried about. And this all started with the Registers article, which said mitigation would cause a 5 to 30% slowdown. You even mentioned this in passing on Tuesday. You said there might be some right. slowdown. Is there a slowdown? So, okay, so... so the slowdown would come from the most blunt edged solution, which is to flush the cache. But whenever a, a, a piece of code calls the operating system, Yikes. but to do that requires a massive reload of the cache for the operating system. The idea being that right now we are not doing that. It would eliminate the benefit of L2 cache. Well, it, yes, and that cache. would be yeah. a dramatic performance yeah. hit. Okay. And, and But we really don't know how much because the more back and forth between the user code and the operating system there is, the greater the problem. So some programs that weren't like doing a whole lot of I.O. operations, yeah, which quick. is generally in the operating right. system, right. They, would, they would not get hit bad. Right. But something that was doing intensive disk operations or communications, it would tend to suffer more. Yeah. Uh, there are other mitigations, though. Uh, Apple mentions, for instance, uh, that w this could potentially, although it would be difficult, be done in JavaScript. So you could actually theoretically use Safari and go to a website, and that website could have code that would just say, well, they'll just take a look at what's in the cache, just in case there's a password or a credit card number or something we can use there. Again, it's just going to be random what they're going to get, but you hit enough you know, computers, you might get something of value. You also so have to be pretty sort of, sophisticated it, it, interpreting it, right? I mean... Right. It, it, it's, it's, it's sort of like a web page that checks to see if you left anything behind on your clipboard. Right. Well, if, pe if people were like using their clipboard to cut and paste their passwords, then such Frankly, software would get lucky. Your clipboard's but a much you might more just get nothing. A much more a much better target rich environment mm -hmm. than your L2 cache. Uh, <laughs> right. Anyways, Apple says we're going to mitigate it. Nevertheless, in iOS and in Safari, we are going to fix that. And they say that that is a uh, impact on Jetstream of less than 2.5%. It is an impact, but it's a, you know, 2.5% is probably not noticeable. Right. Um, Intel uh, and, and AMD both say they're going to do a fix. So, so would that be a microcode fix in the processor? It could very well be. That's one of the things that could be done is that there could be a way of preventing software from accessing these counters. They're, they've just been hit like, hey, we have this information for our own use, says the processor. Everybody else might as well have it too. Well, Maybe everybody not. else doesn't need it. Yeah. 
Okay, and then uh, Microsoft says we've fixed this in Insider Editions of Windows. We're pushing that out. Uh, there will be a patch on Patch Tuesday, but I gather that there's, there have been out of cycle patches already, some right. of which have caused blue screens of death on AMD processors. Last, last Wednesday, right? <laughs> uh, Apple has pushed. In, it says if you're using 10.13.2. You're okay, but it sounds like they also have some additional fixes to push out. Yeah, and it sounds like a lot of this stuff is um, everybody's been working Scrambling. on it. Scrambling. And we'll continue to work on yeah. it. And we may ha we may see more granular fixes down the road, right. I would think, right. instead of right now where it's just like you just got to get it out there. Because now that everybody knows, that also means the bad guys know. And this has gone from being theoretical to being something that people who want to break into your system are also now looking at, not just the security researchers. What I think we're probably going to see is short-term emergency patches, yeah. which right. may induce some performance hit. But then, but, but that's sort of like an, an interim fix. Once the microcode has the chance to be edited to, to solve the underlying problem, then these patches can be removed safely. So we'll get back future performance without having the security problem. And while it is prudent to do this, and of course I expect everybody, every operating system, every uh, microprocessor manufacturer to address this, how big of a threat is this right now? It's purely, it's well, if I may use the term speculative. <laughs> um, we, we're speculating that this could be a problem because we've seen similar problems that were successfully turned into exploits. So. No one wants to take a chance. It's unfortunate that Intel stock got hit the way it did because That's not you know fair. they were the first people yeah. in the targets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but 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 at this point, no one has actually turned this into an exploit. They're just it's all theoretical. But that that doesn't mean we don't have to take it seriously. Yeah. And even if it is uh, turned into an exploit, it's hard to imagine it being uh, really effective. Although was Rohammer ever used? Uh, oh, yeah. Ro Rohammer has successfully pulled passwords okay. from other processors or has been it's been used to get a little bit of a beachhead on a on a shared system. I think, you know, and the end user That's, by the way, a is, huge issue is the uh, shared systems like yes. VMware, Hyper-V yes. and, and both Google and Microsoft temporarily have shut down. Uh, Azure and uh, AWS, I think, shut down AWS to make patches because that's the that's a bigger risk because you're all multiple people running on one processor, right? Right. So, so what we know is that if any of us download malware, we're in trouble. Right. But in a shared system where you have cloud computing, you can intentionally run guy, malware. Exactly. Exactly. And, and sit in on or, a machine in order to get to so in order to get to somebody else's shared. Yeah. Uh, you know, co co resident system, and that would be a better and target rich environment because you just yep. be getting dumped all the time, and you could look through it manually, or perhaps use a, a process and, and and try to understand what you're getting. So right. one thing that that I do want to mention, and maybe Steve, you've got a perspective on this, is just because this is all theoretical, and these are sort of almost like scientific papers, they're white papers explaining that this is a, a thing that was a possibility. It's been speculated about for years. It doesn't necessarily mean that nobody knew about it and was using it in secret because we have heard of a lot of security issues that are discovered by a government, an intelligence agency, mm, and they don't point. report it. And it's possible, since this is potentially a very old technique, it could have been used five or ten years ago even, that it is possible that somebody out there, a state intelligence agency or something, could be have been using it all this time, isn't it? Yep. Yep, and in fact, you know, in, in our imagination, you can imagine someone at the NSA going, Ooh, yep. yeah, <laughs> like this Missed is weird. It by that much because that's what they happens sometimes. Is, they this, found is, it. this is a tool that they loved and they used, and nobody knew about. Well, it, and, and it would be like a better, gold. better targeted tool because if I were trying to get Jason Snell's passwords, if I could run it on his machine, I'd have a better sense of what I'm looking for exactly. and what I'm getting than so, just a web page somewhere. Than just some random. You know, yeah. Although we've seen with the election hacking, what you do is you can set up, yeah, you've set up an exploit and yeah. forge an Go email, target, it, and fish. somebody clicks on the link, yeah. and yeah. All right. So Steve, not a hair on fire time, but certainly a time for prudence and awareness. Yeah, I, I think the, the in the in the technical and academic world, what's happened is that an, an assumption of isolation 
has been broken. Yeah. And people are freaked out because we depend upon isolation for our systems to be secure. So we got to fix that and we will. Yeah. Um, all right. And uh, I appreciate it. We'll talk, of course, in great depth about it on Tuesday uh, yep. on security. Now we'll get maybe even more technical. Uh, but the thing to tell friends and family is, yeah. as always, Keep your computers. you're okay. <laughs> uh, an update, as always, yeah. Yeah. update. Yep. Uh, because uh, you don't need to know the technical details of any individual exploit, just that when an uh, operating system gets an update, there's a reason for it. And yep. it's uh, not because you're getting more pretty colors on the screen. It's often... Generally, it's better afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and better can mean many things to many people. <laughs> Steve Gibson, you're the greatest. At SGGRC on Twitter if you want to communicate with him. And don't forget, uh, Security Now is coming up this Tuesday, and we'll talk about it in great depth. Steve's right now working on a clever title for the show involving Meltdown, Spectre. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'll have something great for us. Thanks, Steve. Speculation. <laughs> Bye.